back about 1990, right in that area, um, my good buddy that lived next door and I had been fishing on a little lake we live on and having a good time catching a lot of fish. And his company was having a bass tournament. Now back then I was a lot younger and my main water sports was water skiing. We would, uh, we'd do a lot of it and have a good time doing it. And I had a Glastron ski boat. And it was a regular ski boat. Closed bow, had 115 horse motor on it. Um, did a lot of fun time skiing with it. But it was a ski boat. Had back-to-back -back seats in it. You set four people down and, uh, and it, was a, it was great for what it was built for. It wasn't a fishing boat. So we showed up to this tournament, paid our 50 bucks. And uh, figured we'd go out and have a good time. We got back in one of these coves, caught a couple of small fish, and um, was you know struggling to catch fish. We we're in a cove around the corner here, and I was throwing a little crankbait in behind the boat, sitting on the motor. And uh, next thing I know, it just stops. I set the hook, and I got about a four and a half pounder. We get to the boat, well, we're all excited. Well, limit's five, we got four fish. And uh, we get to the scales, and lo and behold, we won. So the very first bass tournament I ever fished, I won. We took home almost $700 between us, and, uh, and something about paying 50 and bringing home 700, I liked. That was pretty good. So my grandfather had the wise idea that he was going to start this company that built truck bodies, specialty trucks. This was a great idea, but it's a little bit before its time. And he started building like a truck that had racks in it that would uh, haul bread and a, make a standard pickup truck into a flatbed where he could tie down goods. And that was his goal, that's what he was gonna do. But he picked a location that was right across the street from the dock area of Tampa. And we had ships coming in, goods coming in, and the guys that worked on those ships and those worked on those facilities would come over and go, Mr. Mahoney, can we buy a hammer? Man, I really need a hammer really bad. Can I buy your hammer? Well, okay, and he sold him his hammer. And it turned out that he was starting to sell more tools than he was doing in truck repair and truck bodies. So he turned into a hardware store. And then, like I said, right after World War II, nothing was available, so he would pick up anything he could get hold of. He passed away, and my father and my uncle took over the store, and they added a line of marine goods. Today, we are one of Tampa's, if not Tampa's, top marine supply company. We make a living selling bilge pumps and bait well pumps and trailer supplies and power poles and electronics and all the bits and pieces you need to keep a boat going. A prop is absolutely vital to the way a boat runs. If you over pitch it, you can't get out of the hole, you can't turn the RPMs you need, the boat will not perform, it'll eat lots of fuel, It'll put it under a severe load. A prop is your gear. Say you have a car and you get a choice of one gear. Well, you have to be able to take off from a standing stop, get the car moving, and then hold a reasonable speed. Well, we don't get that with a boat, we get one. They're all thinking that the, they can wave a magic wand and they can make the boat uh, perform like it's got 50 more horsepower. When you find that pitch that runs that boat at 5,800 RPM at wide open throttle with a normal load, you found the right pitch for that particular boat. Start the best. But still, for being right outside, 
of a, the city of uh, Tampa, Harper Springs, St. Pete here. To be able to come out here and catch fish like this is just fun. <laughs> 